it is, it is, you just have to, you gotta work with the person in front of you, sure. you know? And, and again, I bore people by saying this so much. The biggest problem I think that people have as directors is probably, as filmmakers, <laughs> is probably um, directing the ideal movie in their head and not directing the real people and the real places in front of them, sure. you know? So my approach is to, is, to, is to get there with the actor in whatever way works for them. And some actors, like, uh, give you a good example. Like, Joan um, is just, you know, uh, like, like there were, so there's, all the actors in this film are different. And you, in a play, in a, in a context of a play where you've got weeks and weeks to rehearse, you could bring everybody into your world, but actually you'll quite often find in a movie that, that people come from different traditions, they've got different approaches, and they all have to end up in the same film. Sure. But say Joan Allen, right, who plays the grandmother in this, and is one of my favorite American actors, bar none. She is, she, directing Joan Allen is like the kids cartoon version of what a movie director does, right? Because the kids cartoon direct, director comes in and goes, that's great, can you do it, you know, can you do it again, but like, but this time I want you to feel that, you know, that line's a bit sadder and that one's a bit angrier and that's how you're feeling about her. Because Joan is so superb, her machinery is so honed that you just, it's like you, it's like this extraordinary thing where you just dial in the scene and she goes, just give me a second, okay. <laughs> and then she comes back in and it's all there in the, you know, other actors, it's, you have to help them get there. You have to sort of, some, sometimes it works with, with, with some actors that they want you to, to trick them a little bit emotionally. So if, if, you need, if they need to be wound up, you just make it a little bit harder for them. You're a bit more critical. You, you play those games to, to, to sort of, you know, pump them up in the way that they need to be pumped up. Um, some actors want to talk psychologically. Some don't. Some want to talk physically. I personally love it when it's, I like the physical approach to parts. I like... I like looking at how a character moves, how they sound. I sometimes think that if you start there, the interior sort of forms itself. That's my preference, but I learned early that there are actors who you can, like Joan, you can talk pure psychology with, and she will provide all of the stuff that comes from that. You know, so some work from the inside out, some work from the outside in. With Jake, it was a combination. It was definitely the most intense working relationship I've ever had was with him because, I don't know, some of you here will have kids and it is really, you know what it's like trying to get your kid into their pajamas at night. Like, that's pretty tough. That can nearly break me sometimes. <laughs> you know, and, and be, I've, I have begged my little girl. I've said, please, I'm so tired, please. You know, please go to sleep, love. I'm, you know, dad's really hungry and tired. <laughs> and you just multiply that by a million if, you're try if your entire career and life depends on, <laughs> that, uh, on that moment. And, and in fact, it was funny because, uh, and, I ha and I love kids and I have them, and therefore I think, I think if I didn't have children, it would be very hard to sure. do that. Um, but uh, I remember we, we had gone, we moved to, to Toronto to make that film, and as always, in the last couple of occasions where the budgets are allow it, the whole family comes, right? And um, so we all shifted over there, and, and Monica was like, it was getting cold, it was, she didn't know anybody, we didn't know anybody in the, in the city. She had the two kids all the time, our two kids all the time, she was knackered. And three days into the shoot, she came to visit the set, right? And it was a really, it was one of, it was the first time we needed to do an emotional scene. It was the scene where, uh, for those of you who've seen the movie, where Jake is displeased about his birthday cake and, out of, and he shouts at her. And kids do this all the time. They'll just, they'll suddenly, because they'll dig their heels in about something. And, um, and, and Jake, it was the first time he really had to do that. And it was really hard to get him there. Sure. It was re he, was, he was doing what kids do, which is they don't let directly say no. They displace, it's, it's like, uh, it's like trying to get a kid to go to bed again. It's like, oh, but they want to do this, and can they pick this up? Oh, just a second, Dad, I'll do this. And you're going, I know what you're doing, and we're going into that bed. But Jake, you know, unlike your own children, you can't shout. You can't <laughs> shout. And um, it's counterproductive to do that, because, because he need, you need him more than he needs you, you know? That's the difference between parenting and, and being a director. Uh, uh, he had the power in that relationship. And... Um, and I remember, say, I remember thinking, um, you know, and it took me a while to work out how he operated as a kid. And you could usually see, you could usually see there was going to be a problem. And he was brilliant, by the way, utterly amazing. But he's still a seven-year-old boy. So um, the, 
I knew I would know if there was something worrying about him because he'd be a little bit off in much earlier in the day. Sure. And I think there's something worrying him about it today, and I could usually work out what it was going to be and sort of head it off. But in this case, we ended up getting the whole crew to shout. We did shouting games. We, myself and Bree were bellowing at each other and then and then Jake was doing it and we were cheering him and eventually he realized yeah this is okay because he said I don't want to shout at her she's really nice and shouting's rude <laughs> just so sweet you know and um <laughs> so funny enough that the the idea of the, the cuteness of that didn't really occur to me until afterwards because at the time it was like just just shout. <laughs> time is money you know <laughs> and uh but, but, but funny enough, my, my, my wife would have been there, and I looked around, she was gone. And I said to her later, when I got home that night, she said, I've never, ever felt, I've never felt tension like that. Wow. She just couldn't bear it. Um, and, but but it, as we went on, it got easier and easier as he sort of trusted us more. But what I, was, I suppose what I was saying is directing Jake in that question about how you approach actors, it was a whole mixture of techniques. It was, sometimes it was puppeteering, like uh, you go... Um, you go, you give him a gesture that, that I just knew was going to work in the context of the scene. And, and, uh, or, you know, you get him to turn his head. Or sometimes it was just shooting without him knowing. Like, were you sitting at the table in that scene, sort of drifting, goofing off? That was just him goofing off. And we were always ready to shoot when we had two cameras, two crews, um, because your hours are limited with a kid as well, sure. you know, really limited. So you're... You are, every day is like a fight to get what you need before uh, child services come and take your child away forever <laughs> <laughs> and arrest you. Um, and uh, so, so, but then there were other times where it was really like a grown-up conversation with him where we talk about what he's feeling and you just have to find ways of, 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 of making those conversations uh, appropriate and, and understandable to him. Like, for example, um, talking about the fear he's feeling when he knows old Nick is coming in. Uh, like to take his temperature when he's sick. Um, we just, I just like, what do you talk about with the kid? You don't talk about, you know, you think he might kill your mom. I mean, that doesn't, that's too big, right? You talk about what it's like when it's his first day at school, for sure. example, or, or even how he felt in, on the shoot when I got him to, like you can refer to the things that you've been through together. Yeah. And, and, he, and, and because he's really an actor, he's not, he's not just a beautiful natural seven-year-old, which is what he appears to be. He happens to be a great actor. Um, but he's one that is unformed and, and seven and has all the blooming confusion of any um, healthy seven-year-old. So he's, his head's all over the place. But so you find, that, you find that image for him, which is the first day at school, for example. And you get him to feel his way into what it does physically. And then he goes, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, because sometimes you'd sit like that, wouldn't you, and you'd do this, and, and then you coach him through to the point where, where you really believe it, you both really believe it. And what was amazing with him was that as we went on over the course of the 10 weeks that we shot, it's a long shoot, again, mainly because of the hours, uh, his hours, um, it started to get, he started to find it more and more. In other words, he the process became more natural to him, and... Quite, like, so quite often with, the, with crying, he was really good at pretending, and I would, I would dart in, you know, uh, with the glycerin. I mean, filmmaking is so crude. It's so, you know, in some respects, it's the most refined thing, in others, it's the most crude thing, because, you know, like, you know, I run in and pop a tear in without cutting the camera when I know I want him to cry, knowing that we'll be cutting to Brie at that moment, so I can, you know, and I'm talking him through the takes as well. But then on the last... I think it was the last day of shooting, we shot the scene where she's taken away on the stretcher and he's standing at the top of the stairs and real tear came down his cheek, right? And this is, this, it helps me understand acting because when we cut the camera, it wasn't, he wasn't going, oh, you know, I'm so upset. No, he went, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he went, I've got it, I know how to do it. And, and, and so he did Act, he did activate sadness. He did find something in himself that was that was actually moved him to tears. But it was contained and controlled, which is what amazing. Sure. That's the amazing skill that actual actors have, you know. 